Okay. Here we are with the penultimate podcast <laughs> on the podcast stage today. Chris Spangle and the Spanglets. <laughs> We're podcasting in platforms, uh, and he's got a special guest, No Dishes Podcast, who were a finalist in many categories of the podcast awards. So it is very nice to have them here with the Chris Spangle. So I'm going to leave it to Chris, and I'll see you guys at three for the Brandon Peters Show once again. That's not the whole title. It's just the Brandon Peters Show. Once again. <laughs> yeah. Once again, because it was done before. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, everyone, for being here. My name is Chris Spangle. Welcome to Podcasting of Platforms. This is a show about podcasting, and today a show about video podcasting. I don't know, vodcasting. Garrett Portinga is my guest. Jordan Davis, you're both of No Dishes, Bloomington, which is a podcast about Bloomington. And uh, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for yeah, having thanks. us. Yeah, Garrett, Garrett's it, like a, um, an actual videographer and knows a lot about video. So we're going to talk a lot about video uh, and his knowledge. Yeah, I'm going to take this out so I can hold this. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's get comfortable. feels a little more natural this way, um, as opposed to like leaning over with these little things. Here. Yeah, we're all going to have back problems at the end. Also, right. also, shout out to the Fake Ass Book Club. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, the audience here, they just finished up their set. I don't think they're that fake. I, I th- the more no, I they're real. Them, I'm like, yeah. this is real. <laughs> yeah, they're very real. <laughs> I need to have you both as a guest very soon. So very soon. Um, so No Dishes Bloomington. Tell me a little bit about No Dishes. Let's start with you, Jordan. Yeah, so we, uh, we cover the local restaurant industry in Bloomington, interview owners, managers, busboys, servers, you name it. Uh, I've worked at restaurants since I was 15. Okay. Uh, and we just started kind of mid-pandemic. Uh, summer of 2020 to highlight local restaurants that were struggling. Uh, the original idea was to give everyone, like, coming off their shift a, um, a shot and a beer and be like, how was work? Yeah. And we realized it would get really old really quick of just people complaining nonstop. <laughs> so we kind of changed the format a little bit. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. And then Garrett came on uh, after three seasons of audio only uh, and really kind of took us to the next level with video. Okay. Yeah. Garrett, how did you get involved? So um, I actually... I know Jordan's from Mutual Friends, and he's also launched the Food Truck Friday scene in Bloomington, Indiana. And at the time, I was thinking about maybe starting a food truck. So I went over to his office at the Chocolate Moose and pitched him my idea. Instead, you got a podcast. (laughs) And then he pitched me right back on, hey, you know, no dishes. We're looking to maybe transition. Um, The person, shout out to Wes Lasher with the production house, who engineered the first three seasons, was moving on to other projects. He was very busy yeah. doing podcasting, as I'm sure you're familiar with. I know. The, they just asked, the fake-ass book club just asked me how my podcasts were going. I was like, I've barely done any in six months because I'm editing so much for other <laughs> Which people. Which one? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and so, yeah, he pitched me back, and I said, yeah, I'd love to come on. I've, I've seen his writing and reviews on Facebook. Um, that was kind of, I think Jordan could probably tell a little better, but how... The, even the podcast got started was writing food reviews and was it bingo food bingo or something yeah so this like local facebook foodies group one of their ways to support the restaurants was like there was a bingo everyone donated gift cards and so whenever you went to a restaurant you posted a picture of the card and the food and you marked it off nice and i like blacked out my board before anyone else got bingo because i just eat out all, all the time yeah. 20 p- pictures a day <laughs> yeah 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 um but yeah. i was like writing fun in the little five reviews. meal a day club yeah yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just tried to write silly, fun reviews when I posted it, and it just kind of took off. Can we can we tell what your food truck idea was? Absolutely. So he wanted to start a food truck called the Goon Squad, and it just did different types of crab, crab rangoons. rangoons. <laughs> like you have like cheeseburger crab rangoons. Don't, st- don't steal that. I see you. Ca- cats artichoke. I, I, that's already putting together the business. I personally I can't it. stand crab rangoon. So, it, but then you might like I the, the peanut it. butter and jelly crab rangoon. You know, it's just. Different I, flavors, different insides. There's something about, like, the it's the texture, and it's... I don't like cheesecake either. It does explode really? in your mouth. Yeah, there's just, like, a... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like the cheesiness of it. Those are literally, like, my favorite appetizer, my favorite dessert. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's like, they say, don't meet your heroes. I'm having one yeah, of those right. moments right now. Pizza, I'm all in. Like, the more cheese, <laughs> the better. But crab rangoon, not for me. All right. A all nice right. pork egg roll. That's, okay. that's my go-to. All right, yeah, I can get down with that, I, and I do often. In, in an alternate universe, uh, you know, we have started the podcast instead, and we're here with you yeah. because crab rangoons don't fly with Christmas. <laughs> no, 
We should also mention we're at PopCon. I, I failed to mention exactly why it sounds mm-hmm. so weird. We are, we are live. We're doing the show live a lot these days. Uh, you know, at over at Switchboard at uh, our live events. There will be another one in late May, early June. If you're listening, but we're we're here live at PopCon, um, which is. I, I was at the first one in 2014, and it's so much bigger. So insane. many more members. Uh, I almost got killed by a lightsaber. This kid was coming down the oh. escalator too quickly and nearly impaled me with a lightsaber. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I made it. This is how I knew I was going to go. <laughs> I know. I was trying to explain it to my brother-in-law, who, who may come down in a little bit. I was like, it, PopCon is like Comic-Con meets Gen Con meets... I everything. don't know everything. I think it's everything. Cosplay. Yeah, it's like every piece of like a pop culture. And uh, apparently, Will Ferrell's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more Need cowbell. more cowbell. Absolutely. Hey. Uh, I think it? none of us should try a Christopher Walken impression right now for all of no. our sakes. Yeah. So thanks to Brandon Peters for having us here live uh, on the live podcast stage. Uh, one of the in podcasting um, members, ambassadors, I guess they're called, F- Fake Ass Book Club, they're ambassadors. You guys are ambassadors. Um, which, if you're not familiar, inpodcasting.com, which is uh, the new, I don't know, networking c- collaborative group of people that we're going to have our first uh, meetup hopefully in June. So, everybody who's a content creator, video creator, podcaster, graphic designer, whatever, please. Fan, just fan. Just too. a fan of a podcaster. Thinking about starting a podcast, all those meetups will be for you. You'll be able to meet great people. Uh, there's Abdul, who is my, uh, <laughs> my mentor, one of my best friends. He was in my first wedding. Uh, <laughs> Badger? A- Abdul Hakim Shabazz, yeah, he's walking over here. He's a huge oh, he nerd. Uh, and uh, I was his producer 20 years ago. I don't know if you've all met Abdul. So, what up, Abdul? Welcome. Welcome welcome to Podcasting of Platforms. We're talking about podcasting, and uh, I, I manage Abdul's podcast feed for him. Yes, he does. Yeah. Origin stories, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, Abdul, was, Abdul is, is a talk radio show host, and I was his first, I uh, was an intern. Yep. Uh, one of the worst interns in the history of radio. Always late. <laughs> Never drove, drove a crappy car. Hit the buttons wrong. Always late. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not like a little late. Like, yeah, you might have to move just a little bit more. But um, no, like I get there at five fifty nine, hopefully. And the show started like at six oh five. So I had that five minute barrier. What? 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 Are you mad about? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's one way to look at it. Yeah. So it's we Abdul is the person I started podcasting with in 2007 because our signal at the time didn't reach Fishers. Our signal didn't reach the parking lot. Right. <laughs> and so podcasting was a way to extend what you were doing with uh, and still the, some of those podcasts are the things that people remember the most about Abdul in the morning. Yeah, because what we decided to do was if you couldn't hear us in the morning, we made it sort of like okay, let's make it available for the listener. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they could hear the interviews anytime they wanted to. As opposed to just being there at 6 o'clock in the god-awful morning with no crappy signal. Yeah. To pick the best of the show and put that up. Which was so hard to pick from. I know. There's just so much of it. Because they were all great. Just I was just Daniels. joking the other day about, you know, when I knew when Abdul had a late night because he'd go, uh, uh, Immigration, your thoughts. 228-1430. <laughs> Abortion, gay marriage, who wants one? <laughs> Daylight savings time. He didn't have anything prepped, so he'd just walk in and go, I think illegals should be allowed to stay here. And then the phones will light up. <laughs> like shooting fish in a barrel. <coughs> well, it. thanks. It was good to see you. Yeah, it was good to see you. How's, how's everything going for the Spangle We Are Libertarians podcast? Everything's going really well. I mean, obviously, we're at PopCon, which is a huge deal, right? So we're here on the live stage. And then, yeah, the podcast, uh, we were just talking about podcasting uh, in podcasting and the quarterly meetups that we're working on. Sweet. Always happy to be there, my friend. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when it is. I'm going to get my Superman uh, picture of me as Superman with my character. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, where is your cape? It's in my car. <laughs> hey, good to see you guys. It's good to see you too, Cheers. Abdul. Nice to meet you. So, so you started the podcast. Let's go back to No Dishes. Uh, that, was, that was a nice diversion. I mean, we started with 
uh, pop con and ended up at Abdul. It's the most random <laughs> transition ever. Well, well, origin stories. We were talking right. about how we got started, and then yeah. up, that's kind of how you got started. It is. It is a funny coincidence. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. What, Garrett, why don't you talk a little bit about your background? Because we definitely want to lean into the video piece of this today sure. in terms of deciding whether or not to do video for a podcast. Because mm-hmm. I think that's really important. Because No Dishes, you guys are a, an audio podcast, right. but you're also a video podcast, and you guys broadcast on what platforms? Right now, um, anywhere we can put the video, like YouTube, uh, Jordan started doing the Facebook page. Uh, we do cut reels to do you know the shorter, short form vertical video on um, Instagram, and I think that connects in with our Facebook page as well. Yeah, so we do short-form reels, but, you know, it's Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Podcasts, Facebook, right. YouTube, right. pretty much everywhere. The audio stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't have to say numbers, but in terms of, like, where is your audience, video versus audio, wh- what would you say? You're, you're numbers guy. Yeah, so it's um, it's much more video. A lot of a big breakthrough was for us was putting the videos straight to Facebook. Mm. It made the barrier of entry just like even that little click to YouTube. Yeah, be too much for people. I had some people be like, "Dude, I started to just watch the first three minutes because it showed up on my feed, and then I watched the whole hour and a half." Yeah. So that was huge for us to where we, uh, I mean, our viewership from season four to z- season five. Uh, went up five times from wow. just putting the fa- the videos directly onto Facebook. Do you have your own page? Do you put it on your page? What page? How, how do you distribute it in terms of Facebook? Yeah, so we just upload it like a post onto our own page. We have about, I think, 3,000 followers on there. We've been really fortunate to have that you know, grow over the years. So you're not uh, live streaming. You're putting it up as a video later. Yeah, every Tuesday morning, um, you know, Garrett schedules the YouTube, the Spotify, the Libsyn, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then I'll go up whenever I kind of wake up on Tuesday morning and put up the Facebook Every post. Tuesday is different. Yeah, yeah. We like to keep, <laughs> keep you on your shows. Right. So you you have seen uh, – that's a pretty good increase yeah. I mean, to, to go into Facebook and, and get that kind of lift. Yeah, it's been huge. It's um, you know, I just it was one of those light bulb moments where I was like, "Buddy, we need to put this thing just straight onto Facebook." That's that's where our biggest following is. That's yeah. where I found myself watching more and more videos on you know the Facebook video stream yeah. or feed, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, man, it's just I mean, it takes a little bit of extra work, but anything you can do to make it more accessible, don't underestimate just how much that that one click can be in the way of a potential viewer or not. Yeah, I always tell people you need to be where your audience is. Right. Well, we were fortunate that um, prior to joining on with the video, Jordan had built that Facebook following already from that uh, those initial days. Yeah. With the the food reviews, the people that are just like foodies' interests in what kind of stuff around town and and having their own conversation. So. It was natural to, when I started, to want to start a YouTube, but we started it from zero. Okay. So we've seen that growth steadily, continuously. Every episode, we get new people listening based on the guest and new subscriptions. Um, always growing, but we started from zero where initially already had 3,000 people following us. They were already seeing those posts as soon as we started making them. And yeah. I don't know how exactly Facebook quantifies a view if it's if you watch a second three think seconds. the first three seconds yeah yeah so so one really um smart thing that jordan brought up with our current season season six we're what three or four episodes in right now is let's find um some moment in the episode that is really fascinating to that guest and put it on the front end just like a little teaser for like five six seven seconds yeah um, because when you autoplay in your scroll of facebook it just plays the first Few yeah. frames, right? It was well, just we were me having over an and over. Like, yeah. Welcome to the No Dishes podcast. Yeah. It was very canned every time. Well, every episode looked the yeah. same. That's right. Same. But it was a different guest, but we had the same intro. So let's grab something specific to that guest, put it on the front end. And I think that, for me, has really grabbed some new people watching it as well. So are you saying you pull something from the middle of the show and put it at the front end so right. it's like a teaser? Exactly. Yeah, just a little, I mean, I would say even maybe three seconds. Yeah, just quick. something super short, quick, that's like, oh, that's intriguing. I want to watch. Yeah. And then it makes it so as you are scrolling through, right away you can tell it's a different episode and it's not me doing a canned intro every time. How, how do you pick that promo? We, We're still figuring that out. Okay. We've been working through that because we didn't do that at first and... Gary would hit me up and be like, dude, i got to find something. So now as soon as we're done recording and the guests leave, I go in you know, to Garrett's little producer room and I'm like, yo, I think like this, he talked about this or they right. talked about this. Like, let's, let's just pull that out. Like, I thought that was a really just like three second, like really grabbed my attention. I think this cannot be overstated enough. 
when you're done hitting record, make notes. Yeah. <laughs> you will not remember when you're editing even two days later. I, well, so while we're rolling, so in our setup, Jordan is our on-screen host. I'm sitting in the other room watching the cameras, making sure the audio is good. I'm making notes in real time yeah. while I'm doing all of that because I don't know. I don't want to have to go back, I mean, unfortunately, and rewatch the show again and again just to make the edit perfect. So right. any notes I can make for myself, I'm doing that in real time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you said you make clips, speaking of promos. So you have your full show on audio and video, and then you also have the clips, yeah. which is becoming really popular and, I think, important in terms of podcasting. Yep. How do you make those clips? It's still been kind of like an evolution in our process, but um, when I first came on, I was just begging Jordan to watch himself on, okay. on video and listen back, and it was like... It was a it was a fun moment as a married couple, you know, doing a podcast together to try to convince him to do that or persuade him perhaps. And eventually we got to the point where we had someone doing it for us for a while. And he I don't know if it's true or not, but it seemed like all of his choices were kind of at the front end of the episode. Mm. And we wanted to really span the full episode. So Jordan watches and listens and picks out those moments that really resonate for for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Gary was saying married couple facetiously first. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, now, so for season four, we had someone that did it. I didn't think they were finding the best content. And like Gary said, I didn't really like to watch or listen to myself. I was like, I was there. I recorded it. It was great. Yeah. Let's walk let's in, move walk on. out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, so season five, the other guy, you know, I, I hopped in. Garrett uploads the full episode after it's edited to Google Drive. I then look at it and clip out, send him the timestamps for six or seven reels, and then he clips those out and sometimes does a really good job, or a lot of times not. So, sometimes. But sometimes it calls sometimes for Sometimes your it. work is no, no. par, is what I just heard him say. No, it's always really good, but like sometimes it's necessary where he does like little zooms in on people. Yeah. Like, to emphasize whatever they're saying, yeah. uh, which he is, it really, really takes it to the next level. But those reels have been huge. We've gotten so many new followers from the reels. And I think season four and five, our reels combined had 900,000 to 100,000 plays. Wow. And so that's, that's what people are scrolling. When they're getting in a little scroll hole, as they call it, yeah. they're looking at reels. They're not looking at hour long podcast. Right. As a, and as a mechanism, right, having a short clip on, say, Instagram allows. Uh, hopefully the person that's in that interview to do a promotional or like, what's it called when you partner on a post yeah it col- looks like the collaboration is, collaboration yeah. on yeah. the post so it opens us up to their audience and their following um yeah and bob and tom i mean we're, we're bob and tom will get 30 40 thousand views on a you know and then we did a collaboration post with frank caliendo from mad tv yeah right uh fox he does comedy impressions acting 2.5 million or something crazy yeah. 1.5 i forget what it was you know it's it's just the collaboration extends it so much further right if you can go to the person that you're collaborating with on instagram and do a collab and now they don't just let you do one you can collaborate with multiple people yeah. on, uh, on one yeah so for those that don't know when you send an invite which normally you want to talk with people about it beforehand yeah. and not just spring it on them but it shows up in their feed like a post that they made yeah and it's not just them sharing it to their story uh, so it's we. I don't know why we. It's my fault, but we we waited too long to start doing that, and we've yeah. started to do it more recently, and it's been absolutely huge. So always do the collab, uh, send the invite to collaboration when you can. I saw one video podcast that had just started, and they started clipping out their episodes, and they had like two hundred followers because of of right. the, some of the um, shorts on YouTube yeah. had. 20,000 people viewing it. It opens you up to a different audience. Yeah. Maybe people who aren't going to listen to a podcast that's an hour long right. on their road trip. Someone who's going to sit and watch a YouTube or have it in the background when they're at work. You know, you've got a lot of people, I do it myself, just sit and scrolling. And if it's fun content that's quick to, you know, interact with and move yeah. on, it like makes sense. A lot of my algorithm is basketball, NBA. Right. So I'll get recommendations of podcasts that I never would like know to look up or basketball players that have a podcast because when you put that content in now it the algorithm recognizes hey this content matches that person so let's connect them Um, and I think it also goes to a lot of times when we podcast we think I want people to come and listen to the whole of the content I put a lot of effort into this but back to the concept of you need to be where they're at Mm -hmm. if you're taking one minute of your show and it's the key point right. and you get 
5,000 people that saw that point and 400 people that listened to your podcast, what's, what's the difference? Like yeah. those 5,000 people got the message. Well, the message so, is the important thing. Some people aren't interested in hour long. They don't have time. You know, I was talking to, um, to Kat earlier about how I want to listen and watch more podcasts, but I don't have the time. Right. Um, and so we found a way too to monetize those reels because we got like the new fiber internet provider in Bloomington. Right. You know, they wrote a check to be on in the the tagline of every reel. Right. Be like this reel was brought to you by Indiana's new high, you know, Bloomington Indi- Indiana gigabit new now. Speed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shout out. Um. So and when you're, you know, no, 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 they have to pay me now for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just bleep it out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when you're looking, when you're sending a potential advertiser numbers, those reel numbers look very. Um, enticing. Very intrig- enticing. That's a yes. huge in podcasting Delicious. when you are selling your numbers yes. to an advertiser. You're selling really impressions, right. right? So a lot of times people look at their download numbers and they'll have a hundred or two hundred on their audio side, and they'll have three or four hundred on their YouTube side, and then they'll have five thousand impressions on social media. What you want to do is sell all of those numbers bundled together. Yep. Not just your audio downloads. Like, think differently about podcasting and expand it from just the audio way to, of thinking into something a little bit bigger. Well, and that was for me coming into the podcast initially. I was trying to understand who our audience was, and that mm-hmm. was something unique to our program. Is every episode is a different guest, so we may have our regular listeners who are there for Jordan or for the content or the topic, but we may have someone who wants to listen to the executive chef at Elm come in and listen to just that episode yeah. and then co- go away. So the numbers aren't always truly representative of like all the people we're reaching. Right. So adding in the video, adding in YouTube, and to your point, adding in the social media, I think gives a more holistic picture to someone wanting to sell because those numbers on just downloads alone may not really represent that. So Garrett is a professional videographer, Green Hat Media, if you want to check him out. At? Uh, at Green Hat, sorry. At Green Hat. I was so proud of myself that I remembered. What did you say? I, I thought he said Green Hat. At Green Hat Media. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I thought okay. you nailed it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he's correcting you. I said at. Oh. Oh, oh okay. Tagline. So. <laughs> mention. So you obviously have a skill set that, like, I, re- I, I lean on. I ask you questions. I'm sure Kat asks you questions. Like, we're all, hey, hey Garrett. Um, but when you're pulling those clips... Do, why do you not use something like Vidio or Opus or one of these new AI tools that will help you automatically pull clips and select those clips? Is this something you haven't thought about? Is there a, a, you just like have a philosophical difference with something like I, that? I don't have any issue trying it or using it, um, and they might do a better job for us. Um, I just right now Jordan gives me a short list of time codes, and for me to drill in and find those and clip those is yeah. very fast. As an someone who's edited for years and years, so yeah. it I, it would take a little bit of like upskilling to know how to use those tools well, but it does remove the element of like Jordan, the host of the show, who knows the audience, who knows the people, finding those moments, yeah, just sort of trusting that we're going to get the best moments from AI. Yeah, I used Vidio, V I D dot Y O. Um, I'm looking at trying out Opus. I stopped vid.yo just because I got to a point where, again, I'm working on so much client work that it's hard to get my own stuff. It's like a janitor's house is never clean. If, you're, right. if you are a chef, you don't cook at home. <laughs> cobbler's son. Right. You right. just, yeah, a cobbler's son goes barefoot. Um, but what I found with it is that it did an okay job. It'll pull 20 clips, and it will do an okay job of giving you two or three. Right. And it'll give you a lot of junk you don't need. And then you do have to go back and adjust it, maybe add some time before or after to give more context, adjust the captions because it wasn't quite right. But uh, it was way better than I thought it was going to be in terms of selecting the content because what it does is it, it reads the transcript, and then it goes, okay, here's like clearly an in intro to a new segment mm-hmm. piece right it it does an okay job but there still is a learning curve and so i think if you don't have garrett's skill set in terms of editing and premiere and i don't know how to edit video all together set up you know we're recording on an iphone today i've yeah. uh, just made it easy on myself and you can use video the other reason it was like 
30 bucks a month and I'm getting yeah. $30 to death. I don't know about you, right. but right. With, with podcasting, when you're a podcast Plugins, producer, yeah. the amount of like $10, $20, $30, $30 a month subscriptions, it just kind of starts to get a little odious. Not, not to detract into the world of AI, but I, I am a, you know, as a media production person, creative, you know, I see it a lot and I see these tools and my general like philosophical outlook on it is regardless of what the AI machine computer programming is going to be able to do for us, you're always going to need a good operator who knows yeah. how to communicate and interface with the AI. You have to know what the what clip is good. Right. So I, if, if I were to do that, I would just become an expert at using video or whatever that tool is. Right. I'm still the human operator maximizing the use of that tool. I just know how to use Adobe Premiere very quickly. And so taking a time list, e, uh, edit decision list, and boom, 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 chopping them out, export, send off. I know I can get in and out yeah. quick. Um, yeah, I also think, again, it robs you of understanding what will work with an audience. Sure. That, that kind of right. understanding of the intimacy of the content and understanding, like, this was a really good point. This is something I want to emphasize. This is what will work with an audience. And if you rely too much on these AI tools, you're not going to build... The sense of what will work with an audience and get you views, which I have built, which sounds like Jordan understands, or and you won't get the skill set of editing that, that you understand, but they're also, just at a certain point, it's like, look, I, I want some clips. <laughs> the other part is it takes a lot of time to post these things. I got to post <laughs> Facebook, and then I got to go to TikTok, and then I got to, it, it can take a while just to post all this stuff. Right, right. I, I think for me, um, honestly, coming down to like, how do we operate the technology on the back end to get our podcast out there? Or why do we do a podcast and how can a podcast be successful if it's audio only, if it has video? It just comes down to like authenticity. Yeah. And are you really speaking as a real person about something you care about? And are people connecting with that? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, not to segue away from AI or tools, but I think like, why would we do video? Why would we want to see Jordan and, and create these um, tools or how to do video well? Like, technicals aside, you've got to be, like, meaningful with what you're saying and what you, you, know, what you want to talk about. Right, yeah. I mean, we've posted enough reels over the years that you see the ones that, like, register with the audience. Yeah. The ones that get the 3,000. For us, you know, when we hit 3,000, 4,000, like, we're doing pretty good. We've had some that hit 13, which we were really happy with. For us, that's viral. Right. You know, in, in No, yeah, time. absolutely. Um, so, yeah, you just, I don't know. I mean, if you can use AI as a tool and it works for you, fantastic. I mean, I think it's an amazing tool across a lot of different platforms and, you know, whatever's going on in your life that it can help with. But for us, it also, like Gary said, it forces me to watch the episode. Otherwise, I won't. Right. Uh, and I write our episode description based off of my rewatch. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like that makes a better, a better Facebook post, Instagram post. The description's also on Spotify, wherever else it goes out. Uh, so I think there's some, pro, some pros uh, to just going through and like doing it yourself. Some pros. Huh? Written word pros. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a, yeah. Well, uh, I've been... <laughs> I, I definitely push people towards the video, especially in my client work, because you just basically have... You double your audience at least if you're doing video. But there's also, you know, the most you're really going to ever need to spend to get top level audio is like 800 to 1600 bucks, right? And you're going to get really good sounding equipment for less than a thousand bucks. You can buy a $50 microphone called an ATR 2100 and have a pretty good sound. When you introduce video, it becomes much more difficult. It, it add a lot more complexity, a lot more cost. So you, one of our first interactions, you're like, you got to stop telling people not to do video. They've got to do video. Why do you feel that way? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm biased. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's my profession. It's what I like to do. But I think even in the last you know, handful of years, we've seen such a proliferation of, one, the technology that's readily available, but also with all the work from home and you know, people zooming in and being on Teams, like we're okay with seeing a web camera on broadcast television. Yeah. You know, like w the barrier to entry of what we accept as an audience is, well, we all had to do it to some degree. So we're okay seeing other people doing it now. So I don't think it's, there's a big leap. Um, maybe, de maybe depending on the, the age of who you were talking to as someone wanting to make a podcaster kind of plays into that because yeah. they've had more of a relationship with technology, good or bad. Right. And so you have to kind of get over that personal 
uh, if you have you know a challenge with it or not, uh, to pick up a phone and feel confident turning it on and recording, using a microphone or using some lights, going on Amazon, doing some research, do some YouTube University on yeah. you know what are the ten things I should keep in mind. Right. Um, so I just think yeah, I mean you could spend money and and if you want to go really high technical value like hire a crew spend thousands tens of thousands of dollars on high-end equipment or rent a studio um but if you're just a diyer trying to like get that first step into doing video um jordan's getting content keep going video right now right now yeah gotta get Um, that content and i mean like yeah I, i think the core of a podcast started in audio but if you don't even have a nice microphone or a mixer board, like you can use what's built in, yeah. right? and that's good enough. Again, it comes back to the authenticity. Like, is what you're saying interesting to you? And does someone in the world find it and connect with it in some way? Barstool Sports is a five hundred million dollar company or a dollar company. I don't know. It depends on the valuation these days. But because Dave Portnoy was talking into the front facing right. camera of his cell phone, I'm just right. posting it to social media, he set up a brand, built a logo. And then turn Barstool Sports into what it, what it has become. Yeah, it's all about the content, not the quality. You can do it with a phone. When you started, I mean, what, what technology were you using for video? Was it video and audio? No, the first three seasons were just audio only. Okay. Uh, we were pretty much just getting drunk in my apartment. Okay. Like me with the guest. Um, and it was, it was good. It was loose, but we didn't have any advertisers. But we had great viewership um, or listenership from, from the get-go. Uh, but yeah, video didn't come on board, and I honestly have no clue what the equipment was that my producer used. Uh, but yeah, again, shout out to Wes. I think Wes uh, was using a, a Tascam field recorder, like okay. a two or four channel, with like a couple of Audio Technica mics, maybe. So you had some, but, but in terms of no dishes, give me a before with audio and an after with video in terms of the brand. Is there a night and day? Is it just like incremental increases? Is there it's worse now because of Garrett? What no. is it? <laughs> I'm just glad you said it. No, uh, all brought me here today to tell me this, didn't you? Yeah, right. uh, we're, we're, break, we're breaking. Hey, up. can you drive an hour north to get fired on a live stage? Yeah, is mind? there a divorce lawyer in here? <laughs> um, no, it's been amazing. It's, it's honestly has been night and day because uh, people can see you. They can also like I've had. So many, so many more people within the community in Bloomington when I'm out, like, hey, man, I love the podcast. That happens way more than when it was audio. Obviously, the, our audience... That, that happened with Bob and Tom. So Bob and Tom, they said when we started doing the TV show that was on WGN and video social clips, when I started there in 2013, 2014, all of a sudden, the cast was like, now I can't go places. Yeah. They know what you look like. <laughs> they know what yeah. you look like. I mean, I can go places. not that bad. But like yeah. three times in the last two weeks, just random people, hey, right. man, I love the podcast. And it's just, it's awesome. And it's so cool to see the stuff that you're putting. I think we were actually talking about this earlier, that you're putting your like time and effort into. That it's getting out there and that people are appreciating it. Yeah. You know? Um, so I don't know. I think if you can pull off video, even like we were saying, throw some cameras on a tripod. Uh, I think it's, you'll, you won't regret it. It'll be much more better, than, much better than just doing audio. Yeah, I mean, we started with a Logitech 920 back in the day, and now, I mean, we still, a lot of times with We Are Libertarians, just use the camera on our computer because we're streaming. I have a studio now and some DSLR cameras. I mean, I've grown my kit over time. Um, So, Garrett, if you, my beef with video is just that expense and that, that, Sure. That problem of like, man, now I've, I can get audacity to edit the audio and it's free. So if somebody wants to start into video and they want to start at kind of a low cost entry, what are what are some tools and equipment that you would recommend? Well, I think you just um, I wanted to mention what, what you said about sort of, you know, your kit over time. I think each time you do it, you have an opportunity to do something different or better if you want. So start with what you have. Right. And, and I just assume that we all have some way with our phone or our computer, a laptop, a web camera. There's someone like... What the hell is going on behind, behind us? us? Can we take a quick There's, RC a racing drone? break? Because I want to get in on that. That sounds awesome. RC car? There's like something whooshing past us. I don't know if the listeners can hear it. But <laughs> I just want like an RC grave digger that I can just <laughs> run through. I wheels. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the craziest place I've ever podcasted. It's like you're just trying to concentrate and then like... A furry walks by, and then there's like, <laughs> and then there's like a something behind. What is going on? I it's sensory overload, and I love it. Yeah, I'm it's fun. I know it's fun. 
Um, well, so I, I, I don't want to avoid the, the cell phone is a great se- right? cell like, phone's like a great place to start in the webcam on your laptop. It, right? I, I for, first and foremost is always is content and like being genuine and authentic, right? Then we can get into talking about technicals, which are like, what's your camera look like? What's your audio mic situation? Um, when it comes to video, really, honestly, whatever makes great video is going to be great lighting. So, yeah. I mean, there are um, two $300 DSLR cameras on the market. I'm a Canon guy, so at Canon USA Photo, whatever, get a DSLR. Tons of stuff out there that do really high resolution, but it's still not going to look great if you don't have a great lighting. So right. doing a little bit of research into what makes basic great lighting. I mean, I could say, you know, don't shoot with a window behind you. Yeah. Um, use natural lighting if you have it, but you don't want like harsh lighting. So uh, a north facing window is great or something where the sun's not directly coming in to the frame. Um, a ring light, right? Everyone knows a ring light is. Got I feel like really that's very flat lighting. though. It can be, but you know, again, budget wise, like they've, you can, you can spend, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on really beautiful lighting. Um, but you, it's just a light at the end of the yeah. day. So what I, what I, like yesterday, I went and set up a client's office, yeah. and she's going to use her Microsoft Surface webcam, yep. right? And so what we did is we bought these LED strips that are 100 bucks to kind of give a, an LED splash to the wall behind her, and then a $150 lighting kit you know, one in front of her, one kind of behind her for a hair light to give some separation. And it looked really good. I mean, it's like obviously not as good as like Tony Molinero, her videographer who does her course coming out and shooting it, the DSLR. But in terms of like a podcast to watch it, her having a conversation on StreamYard with the nice sounding Shure mic, with the lighting, the lighting is the first thing we bought. It right. was not the. It was not a camera. Right. And if she ever wants to pretend she's podcasting from a rave, she can just get the colors on. Yes, that exactly. You can, you can set it so it like bounces with your voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But just those little lighting touches, I think, are more important than even the camera you're using a lot of times. Absolutely. And and to go along with, um, you know, just approaches that you can do equipment aside. I think keeping your camera. I mean, we're more than an arm's length away. But if you're just one person talking whether with a, you're with a remote guest or just delivering a script or a stream of consciousness, keep your camera you know, on ar- at least an arm's length away, at least at eye level. Don't yeah. be like setting it down on the table and it's looking up your nose or something like that. Those little tips and tricks, I feel like we've all learned through pandemic web camera co- video conferencing. You would think. But I've had to <laughs> tell people He's these learned. rules about yeah. a thousand times yeah. in my corporate day job. Like, hey, we're doing a remote interview today. Like, one, two, three, right? Arm's length, window, lighting, these little it, nuances. Is there a book or a creator or is there a resource that you, a couple resources you'd recommend to I people? Just, I mean, I would just Google like, you know, tips and tricks to web, cam- web yeah. cameras. That- Gary went to the school hard knocks. Yeah. yeah. So you just got to do that. Just got to do it. And, ha- it. and having someone, either yourself where you can review it critically or someone you trust to give you like honest critical feedback is also key. Each time you're going to learn from what you did that you want to do better or different. So be open to the process of, of learning and expanding on each episode, each recording. Yeah. The first one's never going to be great, but that's okay. If you're okay with just you've got to get it out of the door. I think I've heard you say this in, an, in another episode at some point, right? Just ship it. Yeah. There's a great Seth Godin video that I saw, and I think it's literally called Ship It, Seth Godin. He's like, just get it out the door and iterate over time. Exactly. And that's what I've done. And, you know, I'm still learning. Like, the video piece for me is still kind of difficult to understand. And I'm constantly asking my videographer friends for tips and tricks. But I've done video forever. It's just you ship it. You just put it out there and you grow over time in terms of your skill set. Yeah. You just have to... I think the thing that most people get hung up on is they use perfectionism to not create. Exactly. They get totally stuck by the resistance of it. I, the war... The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield is a great book because it talks about that creative resistance that everybody feels. It's like, I need, it, I need to go to the gym, but I don't want to. That resistance, right? And the thing that I run into the most in my work with my clients is just, well, I don't have the perfect lighting kit or my camera's not right or I blah, blah, blah. It's like all these excuses to just not put it out sure. and just put it out, right? Like even if it doesn't look great and you nobody's probably watching it in the beginning to begin with, right? Sure. <laughs> like, and then by the time you kind of get better, then 
you know, it'll be a lot, a lot better quality. Well, and I think, um, you know, to your point about like, when should I buy the equipment? When should I hire someone? Like all you're doing when you hire a professional is I've made all those mistakes a thousand times. Exactly. So you just know, we're going to kind of skip over those real quick and just like, and yeah, okay, maybe I have some cool lights and cool cameras, but just even having someone else look at it as a finished recording or be there with you to be like, Hey, what did you think about that? Like, yeah. Did that? Did how I read that? Did it seem really dry and boring, or did I seem excited? Could I do something different with my eyes? Yeah. Like, be open to what someone else might be seeing because you're thinking about a thousand other different things. Just to your point of like, got to get it out, got to do all these things perfectly. Yeah, um, yeah. I I had a client, two clients this week, both starting at the same time. One hired me basically to come on and do everything for them. One had a meeting to ask me what they needed to do, yeah. and by the end of that two hours, they were like. Uh, <laughs> right? Because I just think it's what you know with video in terms of video shoots and what I know in terms of building the brand and building the podcast and putting the stuff together and launching it. It's just, it just takes so much of the stress out of it. And that, that kind of leads me to YouTube University. A lot of people will go, let me go watch Think Media, which is great. But I think the problem with YouTube University is you get a lot of envy and you think oh, man, I really need to buy this DSLR because this person looks awesome. And then you buy it, you save up, you spend that $2,000 on that camera, you get it, and then you don't know how to use it so it doesn't look as good as if Garrett's doing it. So that's one, you know, yes, learn from YouTube. That's how I did it. But I also think people need to check that impulse of that I I need this thing. I need this Well, and how much much do you identify as a DIYer? Like, is it really important for you to really understand all the steps of the process so that when you finally figure it all out, you can do it yourself. Yeah. Or is like what you want to share, your story, your topic, the food scene in Bloomington, like Jordan doesn't have to think about any of that stuff. He walks yeah. in five minutes before the guest gets going. He's like, all right, let's get going. And everything's ready. It's for a great division it's of a, labor. It's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a flawless experience so that he can focus on the conversation, right. the topics about the restaurant or why that person's there to begin with because I'm handling all of that in the back end. So. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, it just makes me think when when we first started partnering on No Dishes, we have such a contrast of styles. Garrett's a yeah. planner; I shoot from the hip yeah. and wing it, and it drew it drove him crazy. Still does. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I'm it, just used to it now. But the contents turned out good or turned out well, and so he's like, "All right, I'll let Jordan do his thing." Yeah, I wanted um, him to have questions. Like I ask you, what are the questions? I have notes about what I want to talk notes, about, and I'm like, he asked me ahead of time, "What questions are you going to ask me?" I'm like, "I don't know," because I'm like him. I'm like. You're just going to get in there and do our thing. Let's We're going to go. feel our yeah. way through it. Let's, let's talk. Let's have yeah. a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, but that's something, too, that's been interesting that is, since we've been working together, um, Jordan has been on some other radio shows with people who have been interviewing people. What Michael Glab has been doing it for 15, 20, 25 years. Yeah. And he was praising Jordan like, dude, <laughs> you don't have any notes. You have nothing planned. Yeah. And you're talking for an hour, an hour and think, a half. I think it makes it a lot less stiff. It's more organic because I don't, I don't want it to be – I mean, at its core, it's an interview. Yeah. We're sitting down. But it's like I want it to be as conversational as possible. Like I'm so jealous of what Fab Podcast does because it's just like they're just sitting there just chit-chatting. Like I want a podcast like that. you got to have you all on. I know. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I, Mo- you know what I mean. Like you're Moni just is like the, the planner. Same, it's a mirror here, but I feel like you're yeah. like riffing. Like I. <laughs> yeah, every, I think okay. I think that's right. the thing. Like every and and so back when I had co-hosts, the best periods were always I was the planner, they were the shoot from the hip, or vice versa. Like there's always like the the builder and the the person who's like. I'm the starter, and then there's the person who's like, I'm going to make sure that these things get done on time. Like, yeah. it's uh, basically, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to make inappropriate jokes. There's kids around. Um, Do it. But, all right, there's we only bleep, have a couple. There's a bleep button you can bleep. Oh, oh there is? Yeah. I don't know which one which it is. One is I'm it? pretty sure as long as you say earmuffs Maybe? first. Is it? it? Oh, hey. I can <laughs> cuss? We could have been doing that this whole time. We, we could have said all kinds of. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I gotta put that on my board. This is so f-ing cool. Can we start over now that we know we have this superpower? I know, right? Uh, all right, so we've got just a couple minutes left. I know you've got notes. What did I think we we've not- gone through? All right, them, we've actually. got all gone all through them. So, uh, final advice, Jordan, to the audience in terms of starting a podcast, managing a podcast, not just video, but in general. Yeah, just be authentic. Do something that you care about because it doesn't feel like work to me. Yeah, and I have I have guests on that I've known for years. 
and I find out something new when they come and do the podcast with me, and I just I just enjoy it. So yeah. it doesn't feel like work. Do something that you enjoy. Yeah. I know that's so cliche. You know, do something you enjoy. You'll never work a day in your life. But it's All true right. as far as like the podcast. Can, can I ask how you guys got monetized? How you got sponsors? Like, what's that process look like? If you uh, give us a couple minutes. Yeah, it's now. a pain. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> Question mark every yeah. year. I always like honestly growing up. I was like, man, I kind of want to sell cars because I like cars and I've always been you know pretty good with people. But now that I'm trying to sell stuff, it's the worst. Uh, I, and I also just don't have time to send out email, email, email. But we, we you know. 500, like a couple seasons ago, we were having like 500 an episode. Viewers, listeners, everything. Which, if you bring that to Sattva or some VPN, they're going to be like, that's nothing. But to a local Bloomington business, 500 people within the it's community. the right 500 people. Exactly. It's quality over quantity. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, nailed it. Quality. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's about quality. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Be here all day. Actually, two more minutes. Um, but, yeah, so it's uh, just find the people that also want to reach the same people that you're already reaching, and they'll value your numbers much more than a large company. And then ask. Yeah. Sounds and like then you and, ask. And follow up. And follow up. You're waiting for people sheet. to just recognize your brilliance. It's not going to happen. We, we do a very simple, you know, put the logo, maybe a photo or two, and then, like, some of the stats and a little bit about the podcast. Right. As a one sheet. Send nice it out, Canva have a conversation. Image. It is. Yeah, Canva Don't image. give away my secrets, Chris. Yeah, no. It's not the secret. It's what well, the here. secret, I think, is the relationship. I'm like the magician on Fox in the 90s giving away all yeah. the secrets. No, it, it is all, all about who you know. So yeah. work the connections that you have. I, I don't... Per, like if someone comes to me, I will engage in the conversation. But eventually, Jordan really does handle all of the sort of like ad selling. So, right. Um, they it, call me the closer. He's the closer. <laughs> nobody, yeah. nobody calls me that. We'll get you coffee later. <laughs> all right, Garrett. Final thoughts. Well, I mean, I was I was going to echo what Jordan's saying. I mean, authenticity, having something that you're passionate about. It's not a job. I personally like. You know, when I came on, I had one-year-old twins, wife, already two businesses and a day job. And nice. I was like, why am I starting another business and a podcast? But I was genuinely, like, excited about what Jordan was doing with his writing and his food reviews and the topic of food. I, if ever I go somewhere, I'm always putting on Food Network in the hotel to watch. Yeah. So for me, it's fun to hear the stories, be engaged in a community that I wasn't, uh, wasn't already involved with, with the, the business owners. Um, technically speaking, don't let any of the, like, equipment stuff stand in your way there's just use it what's av- immediately available to yeah. you fortunately you know as a business i've established a kit of of professional cameras and lights and we built a studio and a, and a little set for our podcast but you don't have to do that yeah i had that already available ready to go we didn't we didn't really buy anything extra for the show yeah we just used stuff i already had right so i didn't go out of my way we might have bought a couple mics yeah, just find somebody that already owns a media company. It's yeah. just that yeah, easy. Right. Easy. 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 Just that easy. Right here, my easy. phone number is... I don't know why more people don't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I love what you guys are doing. If you're going to Bloomington, then uh, find a great restaurant. Check out No Dishes. Um, what's your website? Yeah, NoDishesMedia.com. We're on Instagram, No Dishes B-Town. Facebook, No Dishes Bloomington. Send us a DM. If you ever come to Bloomington, you want a restaurant recommendation, I selflessly have tried them all. I'll point you in the right direction. Thank you guys so much for having us. I'm going to go destroy some cowbells. I would also, <laughs> I would also shout out uh, the Chocolate Moose in Bloomington. Jordan um, works there. And so if, if you don't go through all of our media, go there and ask him for a direct recommendation. Yeah, You'll just come it. to my office. Come I to the Chocolate that. Moose. All right. And get some good ice cream. And what's your website for your media company? Uh, Green Hat Media LLC or just Green Hat Media on all the socials. All right. Cool. Well, thanks so much for uh, watching and listening. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you got something out of this. If you did, please share it with your friends. That's the best way to help podcasts like No Dishes and podcasting and platforms grow. And thank you to PopCon and Brandon Peters for hosting us. This has been uh, an honor, and we really do appreciate it. And thank you to PopCon. They're an awesome group. If you're um, in the Midwest, check out PopCon. You will not regret coming here and checking this out. Uh, Thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Chris and No Dishes, very exciting. Uh, I like having the in podcasting group here have a nice block going on. That's pretty awesome. So, um, stop that for you. 